Good afternoon, and thanks again for joining us. We'll go ahead and get started now. My name is Terrence Henry, and I'm the Executive Director of TAMIST. That's the Academy of Medicine, Engineering, and Science of Texas. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for the 2021 Edith and Peter O'Donnell Awards Ceremony. We're sorry we can't get together in person this year, but we're really excited to gather virtually and celebrate the outstanding recipients of the 2021 awards and learn a little bit more about their work. So before we begin, I'd like to share a little bit about our organization, TAMIST. TAMIST supports collaboration to advance research, innovation, human ta talent development, and business in Texas. We are composed of more than 320 Texas-based members of the National Academies. That includes the National Academy of Medicine, the National Academy of Engineering, the National Academy of Sciences, as well as our state's 11 Nobel laureates. TAMIST is supported by the founders of our endowment and by our 18 academic and medical research member institutions. We'd like to recognize them and thank them for their ongoing contributions to our research community and to the health and vitality of our state. We'd also like to thank the generous donors of the Edith and Peter O'Donnell Endowment, which makes these awards possible. We'll uh, also like to recognize our 2021 awards committee chaired by Mr. Kenneth Arnold. They did a lot of hard work identifying these outstanding candidates over the past year. And lastly, we'd like to thank the Nobel Laureate Committee chaired by Dr. Joseph Goldstein of UT Southwestern for their service in reviewing the finalists for the award. So now I'd like to introduce our MC for the ceremony, Dr. Kim Orth. Dr. Orth is the W.W. Carruth Junior Scholar in Biomedical Research and the Earl A. Forsyth Chair in Biomedical Science at UT Southwestern Medical Center and investigator for the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. Dr. Orth is the 2011 recipient of the O'Donnell Award in Science, so we're really glad that she can host us here tonight. And she was elected to the National Academy of Sciences in 2020. She is one of 14 past O'Donnell Awards recipients that have been elected to the National Academies. So with that, Dr. Orth, thank you for emceeing tonight's ceremony and welcome as a new member of TAMIST. I'll turn it over to you. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2021 Edith and Peter O'Donnell Awards Ceremony. Thank you for joining us as we recognize the next generation of outstanding researchers in Texas. The Edith and Peter O'Donnell Awards annually recognize rising Texas researchers who are addressing essential roles that science and technology play in society and whose work meets the highest standards, exemplary professional performance, creativity, and impact. The award represents a way to recognize young people at a critical stage in their career and raise the profile of what's being done in our state. And as Terrence mentioned, since the award's inception, 14 O'Donnell Award recipients have been inducted into one of the national academies. I personally am amazed at this far-sighted insight with success. And as you can see, I can proudly display my Tamist Award in my office. Named in honor of Edith and Peter O'Donnell, who have been devoted advocates for excellence in science advancement and STEM education, the award showcases the best, brightest in Texas research, whose creative work could have a lasting impact on our lives. These awards are special because they are selected by National Academy members in Texas and approved by a panel of Nobel laureates. It's a highly competitive, prestigious award, and we congratulate this year's recipients. We would also like to express our gratitude to Edith and Peter O'Donnell and the O'Donnell Foundation for making the awards possible through their transformational gift that has established the awards. We'd also like to take a moment to remember Mrs. O'Donnell, who passed away in November. She was a beloved humanitarian and passionate supporter of scientific research and the arts. She will be greatly missed, but we know her philanthropic work will, be, it will have an unmatched and enduring impact, making a difference for people in the state of Texas, across our nation, and actually through the world. We'd like to acknowledge Mr. Peter O'Donnell for advocating excellence and scientific advancement and education. I'd now like to introduce to you this year's recipients of the Edith and Peter O'Donnell Awards. 
in tw the 2021 O'Donnell Award recipient in medicine, Dr. Benjamin Arenkiel from Baylor College of Medicine. The 2021 O'Donnell recipient in engineering, Dr. Giha Yu uh, from the University of Texas in Austin. And the 2020 O'Donnell Award recipient in science, my colleague, Dr. Benjamin Tu from UT Southwestern Medical Center. And the 2021 O'Donnell recipient in technology innovation is Christian Davies from Shell International Exploration and Production Incorporated. Each O'Donnell Award recipient will have a video highlighting their work, followed by an introduction by their nominator, then remarks from each award recipient. Our first award goes to Benjamin Arankiel, recipient of the 2020 Edith and Peter O'Donnell Award in Medicine. Dr. Arankiel is an associate professor in the Department of Molecular and Human Genetics at Baylor College of Medicine. Let's learn more about Benjamin and his work. Sensory processing is probably the key driver of almost all of our behavior. In fact, this is probably underlying almost all of neuropsychiatric disease. We're kind of at the very beginning of understanding how the brain works. We actually don't even know the complete composite of cell types that make up the brain. What they synthesize, what they release, and how they talk to each other. When something goes wrong with the brain, we have to track down what cell types are affected, what's going wrong, and how we might begin to, to fix those, those issues. Ben's research identified key neurons and their connectivity for feeding behavior and reward. This can be now expanded so that it can help disorders such as anorexia or addictive behavior. One of the key focuses of our lab is to, to study how information flows through sensory systems. When those type of circuits become altered, even slightly, it might turn something that would be normally pleasant into an insatiable urge. If that sensory input or that sensory processing circuit even becomes slightly malfunctioned, that can lead to many devastating neuropsychiatric diseases. The basal forebrain is a region deep in our brains that seems to take in information from all sensory systems. It's a part of the brain that interestingly is directly associated with motivation, awareness, arousal, and learning. If the basal forebrain is disrupted, it might change that, that perception of something good into being something foul. There might be very tasty food in front of you. And if you have altered perception that's, that's happening through the circuits in the basal forebrain, it might tell you that that's uh, something you should avoid or become aversive to. This is something that we think is underlying uh, features such as, as eating disorders. The opposite is true also. It might turn something that would be normally pleasant and tip it into the point of being addictive. The way we're looking at the brain and the complexity of the brain is that it's actually affording us infinite possibilities to reroute information around bad circuits, bad cells, in order to reinstate proper function. You bring somebody who's smart, who's motivated, who's asking interesting questions, and you put them in an environment where you care about neurological diseases, so that when that serendipitous discovery happens, they're really prepared to dig deep into it. If we ever hope to treat damage to disease nervous tissue, we first of all have to elucidate the wiring diagram or the blueprint that makes up the brain and come up with ways in order to fix it. This inspires us all. Dr. Arankiel's nominator is Dr. Huda Zogby. Dr. Zogby is the Ralph Bajan Professor of Pediatrics, Neurology, Neuroscience, and Molecular and Human Genetics at Baylor College of Medicine. She is also an investigator with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and the funding, founding director of the Jan and Dan Duncan Neurological Research Institute at Texas Children's Hospital. Dr. Zogby will now introduce Dr. Arankiel. Thank you, Kim, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm thrilled to introduce Dr. Benjamin Arankiel to you today. Ben grew up in Minnesota with an insatiable passion for fishing. 
In fact, this passion drew him to science as early as he can recall. Going fishing, Ben would work out the weather, wind, temperature, pressure, tide, season, even the aggression of a bass versus a walled-eyed pike. Open to learning something new and willing to readjust as needed while he fished, Ben discovered his natural affinity for science. He received his bachelor's degree in microbiology and chemistry with honors from St. Cloud Univ State University, then went on to do his doctoral research in genetics under the mentorship of Nobel laureate, Dr. Mario Capecchi at the University of Utah. From there, he went to Duke University where he was a postdoc fellow with the late Dr. Larry Katz and with Dr. Michael Ellers. As a postdoc, he investigated the architecture of brain circuitry. He published 12 papers during his graduate and postgraduate studies and won several awards. And in December, 2010, Ben joined the faculty of Baylor College of Medicine as an assistant professor in the Department of Molecular and Human Genetics, where he was named the first McNair Scholar and was among the first new investigator recruited to the Jan and Dan Duncan Neurological Research Institute. He is now an associate professor with a joint appointment in neuroscience. Ben is interested in understanding how brain circuits are established, maintained, and function. Studying the mouse olfactory system, he has carried out innovative research providing insight into mechanism of mechanisms of ongoing synapse formation of adult brain neurons, information that we desperately need for regenerative medicine efforts. In the course of his work, Ben noticed a small population of neurons that affected the animal's weight. Ben's curiosity led him to investigate these few neurons, even though they were far from the olfactory system he was studying. His keen eye and persistent interrogation led him to many new exciting discoveries relevant to human mental health. He's currently investigating how genes and sensory experience interface to build, maintain, and remodel neuro neuronal connections in the adult brain and how the basal forebrain circuits influence addictive behaviors, eating disorders, and neuropsychiatric disease. His work is published in top-tier journals and has been consistently recognized through competitive awards, continuous NIH funding, and honors that include the Michael E. DeBakey Excellence in Research Award and the Norman Hackerman Advanced Research Program Award. Beyond his scientific contributions, Ben is a phenomenal mentor and educator. Baylor College of Medicine has recognized Ben's contributions to education with the Mark Dresden Award for Excellence in Graduate Education and the Outstanding Educator Award in Neuroscience. His trainees have also received numerous awards speaking to Ben's excellent mentorship. We're so fortunate that Ben chose to call Texas home where he is now a master of saltwater fishing and an incredible innovator and educator and a generous colleague. Congratulations, Ben, on this very well-deserved honor. Please place the medal around your neck. Thank you very much, Huda. Okay, so um, thank you all for organizing this. I know it's a little bit hectic with Zoom and it, it's a, a cumbersome machine based on all of the, uh, the um, uh, interactions that we've had. So first of all, I'd really like to acknowledge Edith and, and Peter O'Donnell and their foundation uh, for the generous support of not only this award, but their, their continued um, promotion of science and sharing and collaboration throughout the state of Texas. This type of generosity really in my mind represents the prime example of the strong support that we all receive as, as researchers and scientists here in Texas. It's a really unique situation and it, and it truly does benefit us all and attracts the right type of people in my mind. Uh, of course, I'd like to thank TAMIST and the awards committee for all of their effort, their time, and of course, the recognition. I'm truly honored to be chosen for this award and will certainly do my best to, to um, live up to its standards. 
I'd also like to importantly recognize my home institution of Baylor College of Medicine and our local community through the Texas Medical Center. It's kind of where I really look at is like all of the senior leadership I've been provided, my, all of my mentors, colleagues, collaborators, and importantly, all the trainees that I've had the opportunity to work with and, and learn from, it's not only built what I consider almost an ideal or perfect situation to launch a laboratory, but it really has continued my overall education and my inspiration every single day. So for that, I, I thank our whole community. Finally, um, I, and to me, probably most importantly, I'd like to extend my most heartfelt appreciation to, to Huda. Um, she's been an absolute beacon in leadership and inspiration to myself and, and everyone else. Um, and to me, Huda represents exactly what I've grown to appreciate in a leader. She's always empowering those around her uh, with this sense of possibility and potential that remarkably is balanced with a unique uh, sense of patience. It's, um, to me, this is matched at the same time with the, the utmost level of adhering to the highest standards and scientific rigor and integrity. And perhaps most importantly to me on a, on a personal note, she always leads by example. And with, in my mind, what I look at is a genuine authenticity. So thank you very much, Huda, for not only this nomination, but for your tireless and unwavering character and support. It truly builds um, towards a great culture and elevates everyone around you and who's fortunate enough to to learn from you. So with that, I want to thank the organization once, once again, and I sincerely appreciate this award. Thank you, Benjamin and Huda. That was beautiful. Um, our next award goes to Gui Ha Yu, recipient of the 2021 Edith and Peter O'Donnell Award in Engineering. Dr. Yu is a Mike Walker Associate Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. Let's learn a little bit more about uh, 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 Dr. Yu and his work. The passion of the science is driven by my love to explore these kind of unknown. The best part of your discovery always is coming from this unknown, right? Unexpected. I'm leading a, a group of scientists that is actually working on the far front of this bringing nanotechnology solution to address these pressing grand challenges, especially in energy, water, and sustainability. He definitely chooses projects to work on based on, on their potential impact. One of these the, the greatest challenges is how we can utilize this renewable energy to produce the clean water and how to do it kind of very efficiently and then very low cost. We are creating this novel hydrogel that can use the less energy from sunlight to produce clean water in, in very high efficiency and we actually are trying to see how this hydrogel can be useful for this solar vapor generation. A solar power distillation process to produce Use the clean water so it can be out of seawater or can be out of the wastewater. Hydrogel is a very special type of functional polymers. They can retain like a very large amount of water and then maintain their 3D structures. We're also developing the super moisture absorbent gels that can take in the water vapor from the ambient air so with very high efficiency and produce the clean drinking water. Whether it's flow batteries or super capacitors or the, the solar water evaporation, it's just amazing how much he's been able to take these porous hydrogels to come up with these hybrid materials with, with advanced function. We actually combine these energy gels with these traditional kind of battery electro materials, creating these 3D interconnected network. So they actually will make this electron and a charge transport much faster. Our goal is really transform our current battery technology that you can really realize the fast charging and discharging. I really wanted to work with um, the industry to actually make these kind of novel materials developed from my research lab in, into the components of these future generation batteries and also very portable, cost-effective water purification systems. I don't think we can even imagine five, ten years from now all the new inventions that they're going to make, given that they've made so many in his startup as a new professor. If we can make these materials in a very cost-effective manner and also make in a very large quantities, I think we will change the world in, in terms of providing these nanotechnology solution to produce clean water, to produce clean energy.
Dr. Yu's nominator is Dr. Keith Johnston, and Dr. Johnston is a professor of the MC Bud and Mary Beth Bard Endowed Chair in the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Texas in Austin. Dr. Johnston will now introduce Dr. Yu. BYU has a PhD in chemistry from Harvard and a postdoc from Stanford. So both in chemistry and chemical engineering. So this gives him a bilingual outlook. His PhD student, Nancy Go states, he guides us to be scientifically driven when looking at new experimental phenomena, but at the same time to be practically oriented, whereby our materials can benefit society. He has been a source of inspiration and creation of ideas and is very supportive of students, end quotes. So how would I describe him? What words? brilliance, visionary thinking, kindness, humility, and unbounded desire and passion to help society. I asked Nancy what she thought, and she said the word that came to mind was diligence. Guiwa has made numerous breakthroughs with multifunctional hydrogel polymers for addressing grand challenges in energy and water sustainability. His broad vision with gels and what they can do is reminiscent of Richard Smalley with fullerenes to address so many important problems. The artwork in his manuscripts many times finds a home on the cover of a high impact factor journal and gorgeously depicts how each gel solves a key challenge. He already has 35,000 citations and many awards, including a Sloan Research Fellowship, Dreyfus Teacher Scholar Award, and in 2020, the Polymer International IUPAC Award. He has pioneered a novel class of multifunctional polymeric nanomaterials hierarchically nanostructured conductive polymer gels with controllable size, tunable porosity, and chemical functionality. The high transport rates and surface areas in these gels provide a platform for incredible innovation. Weewa is himself multifunctional with great expertise in chemical synthesis, self-assembly, and fundamental understanding of how physical properties are related to chemical properties and structure. These gels have led to improved efficiency and function in many applications, for example, supercapacitors, fast charging batteries, and electric catalysts for solar fuels and nitrogen fixation. He wondered, why do lithium ion batteries have anomalously high storage capacities not predicted by theory? In Nature Materials this month, his team used in situ magnetometry to decode new storage mechanisms of metal compounds in these batteries with up to three times the current grid scale energy storage capability. He traced the large excess capacity to electrochemically reduced iron nanoparticles and composites that can store a large number of spin polarized electrons. In the last few years, here comes the sun in his work, photons. You saw him on top of a building. Imagine producing extremely pure water rapidly from evaporation of seawater or contaminated water with solar energy alone. Unexpectedly, they lower the number of hydrogen bonds in water when confined in the pores of gels with very creative porous architectures. Thus, the water evaporation rate beat the world record by many times. A practical solar water evaporator is a brightly shining, shining beacon on top of their building. Very recently, he's developed an atmospheric water irrigation system based on super moisture absorbent gels. This gel mixed with soil can harvest water from the air and provide it to plants upon solar heating. Without piping water in, this breakthrough gel was formed with an interpenetrating polymer network of hygroscopic polyperol and a thermal responsive polyacrylamide. David Daniel Tamas, board president stated, we look forward to see what world changing solutions he will develop next. I feel the same, it's unimaginable. With the excitement and success of students who work with Guiwa, what starts here changes the world so that we may live with greater energy and water sustainability and prosperity. And this will lead to greater inclusion of all peoples living in peace. We will have placed the medal over your head. <clears throat> okay. Can you hear me? All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Johnston, for your very kind introduction and tremendous support on nominating me for this uh, very prestigious award. 
I would like to first acknowledge uh, Temist, O'Donnell Foundation, and O'Donnell Award Selection Committee for this truly, truly um, incredible award and honor. I'd like to thank a number of my colleagues for their uh, great support and mentorship throughout these years, especially Dr. John Goodenough and Dr. Arumigan Mentorin, the Director of Texas Material Institute and the Material Science Engineering Program. So they were on my uh, faculty search committee and hired me into the UT Engineering eight years ago. So I still remember very vividly that uh, their very kind, encouraging and inspiring words during my uh, interview and warmly, very warmly welcoming me to join the mechanical engineering and the materials engineering in Austin. And then John has always um, encouraged me to keep folks on tech, tackling big societal challenges with materials innovation and then bring one's best ability and then really enjoy the scientific adventure and believe in the um, very exciting the exploration. And I have been very fortunate to have many fantastic collaborators over the years in Colorado School of Engineering at UT Austin in various departments, including Dr. Johnston on, my, um, on a number of exciting um, research projects together. And my research group and I really benefit a lot from these collaboration. I'm also grateful to, uh, for support at UT Austin at various level uh, from university president Greg Fenvers, who is also our former uh, engineering dean and the current dean of engineering, Sean Wood, and the department uh, chairs, our former chair, Jurathi Murthy, now dean of engineering at UCLA, and our current chair, Rick Neptune. They have been all very supportive of my research program. I also like to thank my research group, many of my former and current group members. I've been so fortunate to have worked with over 40 outstanding graduate students, postdocs, and visiting scholars in the past eight years. And I think some of you probably also attended today's ceremony. So I think it's you who, uh, who all who uh, make all the exciting research possible. And this award is really a great recognition for all of you. And I'm very proud and thankful for each one of you for the hard work and a wonderful research journey together. So I always believe that um, one of the most fulfilling achievements being a professor and an educator is helping hundreds of thousands of young minds to achieve their dreams in science and technology beneficial to our society. And the last and the most importantly, my family. So I'd like to thank my parents for showing me as a model to always work hard to achieve something meaningful and to do things useful for society. And my love to science engineering is really deep rooted in my childhood coming from my father who was a chemical engineer working in the sugar making industry. And when I was a little boy, he brought me to um, the workplace and see the gigantic machines in warehouse. So that also makes one of my biggest career motivation is translate the, our scientific discovery into the exciting and useful technologies. I'm also very, very blessed to have my own family, my lovely wife, Dan Dan, and the three amazing kids, Yuja, Yuhan, and Yulan. So Yuja just turned 11 and really loves nature and wants to be a photographer or the doctor when growing up. And Yuhan is always very into Legos, breaking things and trying to fix them and uh, full of ideas and then crazy, I, crazy or creative uh, in the different ways and making my life very busy. And um, I think he's also wanted to become an engineer in the near future. And Yulan is too young to tell me um, her dream yet. So in this past challenging year, we have been working together on several small projects um, back home and um, including the growing different plants in backyards which also leads me to come up with that idea on a very recent work of self-watering soil for sustainable agriculture. So this award is also really for them. And then uh, I love my family very, very much. And thank you very much again to Tamis and to O'Donnell Foundation for this wonderful recognition. Thank you, Guiha, that was beautiful. And Keith for your introduction. Our next award goes to Benjamin Tu, recipient of the 2021 Edith and Peter O'Donnell Award in Science. Dr. Tu is a professor in biochemistry at UT Southwestern Medical Center. And we're gonna learn more about Ben and his work in the next video. You know, what if we could slow neurodegeneration or prevent particular cancers from ever happening. We might actually have the chance to do this. Most cells, they're growing or they have to persist or survive. We know a lot about mechanisms by which a cell proliferates, grows and proliferates, but less so about these survival mechanisms. Being able to impact disease really requires an understanding of the fundamentals 
of how a cell works. And that's really what Dan is doing. If these survival mechanisms are not operative, the cells either will die or they'll adapt in a bad way that could potentially lead to something like cancers. There are these small molecule metabolites uh, in our cells that are actually incredibly important. One particularly important intermediate is a metabolite called acetyl-CoA, a key metabolic currency of the cell. It can tell cells when to turn on certain genes. It can tell cells when they become starved and need to turn on separate genes. Certain tumor cells seem to be dependent on acetate, which is basically uh, produced from uh, acetyl-CoA. And we think this is maybe the key to how certain cancers might take off. So if we could uh, potentially uh, you know, block this enzyme or find other strategies related to this pathway to target, we could maybe stop these cancer cells from persisting, so to speak, so that they can never take off to form a, a full-blown tumor. Ben's like a detective. He is really brilliant at looking at the nuts and bolts of how cells work, and he has just made one important discovery after another in multiple different areas for metabolism throughout his career. If my findings could help lead to some kind of therapeutic advance for a particular uh, condition or disease, uh, I think that would be that would be great. And as we go along, we, we find out more clues, we put the pieces together. And then we might have an opportunity to apply what we've learned to, to treat a particular condition. It's incredibly exciting, this feeling of maybe, you know, knowing how life works. If we really understand some of these pathways and processes, we figure out one of these deepest secrets of life. <laughs>
to autophagy to the metabolic state of the mitochondria, leading to the identification of ataxin-2 as a sensor of mitochondrial metabolic state. Ataxin-2 contains 24 methionine residues in a low complexity domain, forming phase separated droplets when methionines are reduced and reverting back to cellular protein when they are oxidized. This mechanism in turn regulates the TOR pathway to turn on or off autophagy. By forming this, a cloud-like structure around the mitochondria, the methionine-rich domain of ataxin-2 directly senses whether mitochondria are engaged in oxidative respiration or in the synthesis of me metabolic building blocks. Notably, hereditary mutations in human ataxin-2 gene um, tr trigger a devastating form of a neurodegenerative disease. So, but despite its obvious importance to human biology, little was known about how ataxin-2 might function in a mechanistic sense. Ben's work has now provided a link, a critical link, which will pave the way to better understanding of this neurodegenerative disease. Ben is not only an exceptional scientist, but he's an inspirational mentor to students, postdoctoral trainees, and other faculty. His own trainees learn to become first-rate scientists and go on to top positions. But Ben also shows his dedication to training through serving as the graduate program chair of our biological chemistry program. And Ben not only mentors students on science, but he provides an all-around supportive environment. And back in the days before COVID, he frequently organized social gatherings for our students and faculty where they could informally meet and chat about science and um, making the entire environment better for all of us. Ben's wife, Dr. Helen Lay, is an assistant professor also here at the uh, UT Southwestern in the um, Department of Neuroscience. And their two lovely children, Eva, uh, 12 and Evan, 9, keep them busy at home. Ben, as you can tell, is an engaged and interactive faculty member and a leader within the department and the institution. He makes all, all those around him better scientists and mentors, and we are very privileged to have him as our colleague in our department at UT Southwestern. It's my pleasure, therefore, to introduce Dr. Benjamin Tu as the 2021 TAMIST Award winner in science. So Ben, I guess it's time for you to put on your medal. <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, Meg, for that very nice uh, introduction. Uh, so, you know, first I would definitely like to thank Tamist and Mr. and Mrs. O'Donnell for this very nice honor. I also want to thank, uh, you know, Meg for nominating me, encouraging me to apply, uh, as well as my letter writers uh, for their support. Uh, so, uh, as Meg mentioned, I went to graduate school in San Francisco, and uh, I still remember when uh, many of my classmates and colleagues thought I was kind of crazy for deciding to do my postdoc here in Dallas and UT Southwestern. You know, most of them would stay in California or move to the East Coast, you know, for example, New York or Boston. And I was probably one of the only ones who decided to go somewhere in between uh, in Texas. So I, I came to Dallas, uh, UT Southwestern uh, to do my postdoc at the end of 2003. And, uh, you know, I, I really thought I was only going to be here for a few years temporarily, but, you know, next thing you know, 17 years have gone by. And so I've now uh, lived in Dallas longer than uh, any other city in my life. So I suppose I officially qualify uh, as, a, as a Texan now. Uh, so, so first, I, I definitely have to thank um, all of uh, my lab members, uh, past and present, uh, who've helped uh, get the lab to where it is today. So you know, we follow the data, it takes us into new areas, and we learn surprising ways through which the small molecule metabolites uh, exert their influence on important life processes. Uh, at the same time, we often find ourselves, you know, challenging paradigms. And so, you know, these discoveries are, are often met uh, initially with a lot of skepticism. And uh, if you all were to read some of the reviews we get, uh, it might seem like we have no idea what we're doing. Uh, you know, we're practicing without a license, so to speak. So I really want to acknowledge them, uh, my lab members, for their perseverance, uh, their hard work, you know, continuing to push forward, uh, you know, so buying in and understanding that, you know, this, this is the way. Uh, I also would like to thank my scientific mentors, uh, without whom, you know, I wouldn't be the scientist that I am today. Uh, first, uh, you know, Jim Wong, uh, while I was at Harvard, uh, Jonathan Weissman while I was at UCSF, and then uh, Steve McKnight while I was a postdoc, and, and he was also chair when I first joined. Uh, I really want to uh, thank Steve for uh, encouraging me to think different 
to think bold and to be the best scientist I can be. And I also like to thank Meg uh, very much for continuing to support me and enabling the type of research that we like to do. I wanna say a few things about uh, my department as well as UT Southwestern in general. Uh, it's really great to be working in an environment that really values uh, substance and scientific discovery. You know, so while grants and high profile papers and awards can be nice, uh, what's often more important is you know, appreciating that you know, good science is hard. You know, it is a process, it takes time and patience and you know, your findings may take you in long-winded unexpected directions and you may face a lot of resistance from experts along the way. And so it's really been a privilege to be part of a, a department and university that understands these aspects of discovery-based science. So I really wanna thank my colleagues you know, for welcoming and supporting me and uh, for Meg, to Meg, uh, especially for continuing to make this department a great place to do science. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge the help of many collaborators uh, on our campus. Uh, you know, when I first started my lab, I, I never imagined uh, working with cancer models or that I'd be thinking about, you know, hematopoiesis or, or even the brain. But I think it's a, a reflection of the excellent collaborative environment we have here and what is possible at, at UT Southwestern. Uh, I also very much want to thank uh, my wife, Helen, for uh, her support through all these years, uh, as well as my parents. And I just want to end by saying, you know, I, I, feel, uh, I feel really good about where our research is headed. Uh, you know, I believe we're really on the verge of understanding some of the big unsolved mysteries in, in biology that could help explain, you know, the underlying basis of particular cancers or neurodegenerative conditions. So I'll try my best to keep doing uh, what I do. So uh, thank you again to Tamas and the O'Donnell Foundation uh, for this wonderful award and for your support of research and education in Texas. So, thank you. Thank you, Ben and Meg. Our final award goes to Christian Davies, recipient of the 2021 Edith and Peter O'Donnell Award in Technology Innovation. Dr. Davies is the principal science expert on nature-based solutions at Shell International Exploration and Production Incorporated. Let's learn more about um, Christian and his work. When I joined Shell, I said, I'm gonna work on projects that are gonna help try and solve the climate change problem. That's my day job now, is trying to store as much carbon in nature as possible. Can we make a material difference to not just the climate, but society? Can we help improve the future for our children and their children? Christian is an innovative scientist with deep expertise in nature-based solutions, protecting, transforming, and restoring natural ecosystems such as forests, grasslands, and wetlands. He has developed a number of innovative techniques that allow us to understand, measure, and monitor carbon uptake of natural ecosystems. The way I view nature-based solutions is essentially management of natural ecosystems to store carbon. If we can increase those things through changes in how we manage land, then we can take CO2 out of the atmosphere and keep it locked up in soils or biomass. The insights we gain from understanding the nature better allows us to promote nature or soil to capture more CO2. Reforestation is going to store carbon above ground. The agricultural production systems, it's probably more soil carbon. It's coastal and wetland ecosystems, it's about storing carbon in a lot of cases in sediments. The trees and the vegetation are like lots of straws now, and those straws are taking up CO2, that that carbon flow into the ground is actually typically a significant way in which carbon is stored. So it's carbon flow in, it converts that to a sugar via plant photosynthesis, and then you have a lot of microbes in soils that are actually utilizing that carbon, and that then gets transformed and transferred into soil carbon. With carbon neutral fuel, it was like, well, how do we help customers decarbonize when they use our products. What do we do for those customers that just don't have another choice or can't afford to buy an electric vehicle? So we came up with the concept of this carbon neutral fuel that would integrate storing carbon in nature in a cost-effective way and using those, that, that carbon stored as carbon credits to apply to reducing the emissions when a customer uses a, a conventional fossil fuel.
both in the UK and the Netherlands, you can go to any gas station that Shell has and you can buy carbon neutral fuel. If we don't all work together to solve this problem, then it's, it's gonna be really hard. It just is something that is incredibly rewarding to work on, especially in an oil and gas company. So Dr. Davies nominator is Dr. Selda Gonzal. Dr. Gonzal is the Vice President of Global Commercial Technology at Shell Technology Center in Houston. Dr. Gonzal will now introduce Dr. Davies. Thank you, Dr. Ort. Um, I'm delighted to introduce Dr. Christian Davies as the winner of the Technology Innovation Award. Um, Christian is an outstanding scientist globally recognized for his expertise in biosciences, microbiology, and ecology. He's our principal science expert in nature-based solutions aimed at addressing climate change through enhancing nature's capacity to absorb more CO2 from the atmosphere. Christian holds a BS degree in biological sciences from the University of Salford in the UK and a PhD in ecology from the University of Edinburgh. After completing his postdoctoral studies at the University of London and University of Georgia, Christian joined Shell to conduct and lead research in environmental biotechnology. Christian is based at our technology center here in Houston, where he leads our R&D programs in nature-based solutions. This is a critical area of technology focus for us in Shell, as our ambition is to become a net zero emissions energy company by 2050 or sooner aligned with societal needs. There is not a single solution to achieve this ambition. The solution space will cover a, not a range of technologies, including energy efficiency, use of low carbon energy products and capturing carbon through technology and nature. So Christian's seminal work in nature-based solutions has been a critical enabler for us in developing a broad range of carbon management technologies and business models. These models allow science-based, credible and impactful pathways for Shell, for our customers and our society as a whole in reducing emissions and enabling decarbonization of our energy system. Now, through Christian's work, we can better understand, measure, and monitor ecosystems, leading to improvements in how we manage natural resources, how we produce bioenergy, and how we can enhance nature's ability to capture and store CO2. Now, outside of Shell, Christian is highly engaged with regulators, with universities, and is often invited to key thought leadership forums in Washington, D.C. and at the United Nations. He is an adjunct professor at Rice University and Colorado State University. He is actively involved in supervising and mentoring graduate students. On a personal level, Christian is humble and caring by nature, is highly regarded by not only his peers, but by all that engage with him. He is dedicated to his family, his, his wife, Noel, and his children, Abigail and Colin. Uh, Christian loves the outdoors. He's passionate about sustainability and very passionate about leaving a world that's healthy for future generations. It's my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Christian Davies to this virtual podium. Uh, Christian, could you please place your medal over your head and join us for your remarks? Congratulations. Thank you, Selda. I've just enlisted my son to help with that. Um, <laughs> so good afternoon. It, it really truly is an honor for me to be here today, uh, to have been considered for the Thomas O'Donnell Award for Technology and Innovation has marked a professional milestone. And to receive the prestigious award, uh, it truly is humbling. When I first learned about my nomination, I was surprised to say the least, 
And when I later learned that I was selected as the winner, I was floored. I thank Zelda Gunsel, Ajay Mehta, and David Parker for, for playing a role in nominating me. And I thank TMS for, for accepting me into this family of science, technology, and innovation in Texas. When I joined Shell 12 years ago, uh, I made a promise to my nieces to help bring solutions to climate change. And my journey to this moment in time, it really has been a story of luck, determination, belief in myself, but also others, and being in the right place at the right time, but most of all about really enjoying myself along the way. I have a lot of people to thank for, for playing a role in that journey, uh, not least my family who have graciously put up with me talking about uh, soil and carbon for the past 20 plus years. Um, but it has been the inspirational mavericks that sparked an innate curiosity in understanding how ecosystems function. Professor Phil Einstein, he lit the flame in me back in 1998. I was a year in industry student at the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology. I worked for free, but I got to work on the very first stable isotope probing experiments and literally go fishing for novel methane oxidizers in soils. Dr. Mark Bradford nurtured my early fumblings into soil carbon and microbial ecology uh, as of a young postdoc at the University of Georgia, working to understand how microbes adapt to climate change and then therefore influence uh, climate change feedback mechanisms. Professor Carlos Sehi from the University of Sao Paulo, he gave me some of my most cherished moments of field work in the sugarcane plantations of Brazil. His passion for empowering young scientists is something I try to do every single day. These mentors established the scientific foundations for my work uh, on solutions to climate change and a career as a soil scientist at Shell. I for sure was an unusual candidate for a career in Shell. And I thank Dr. Jeremy Shears and, and Gordon Lethbridge for bringing me into an industrial setting and then allowing me again, like my family, to talk about soil and nature-based solutions for the last 12 years. Being in the right place at the right time, that was something that happened, uh, as it always does, at a, a coffee pot uh, at the Shell Technology Center in Houston, where I met Russ Conser, who was our G a gl a global manager for uh, Shell Game Changer. And for a change, he was someone talking to me about soil carbon instead of the other way around. This discussion resulted in us uh, uh, developing a team to build innovative business models and technologies that would pave the way for Shell, an energy company, to store carbon in nature at significant scales. That team of Peter Bick, Steve Applebaum, Rick Mariner, Hank Moivir, Russ Conser, and myself have been able to start a change that could really allow me to keep that promise I made to my nieces when I joined Shell to find those solutions to climate change. As for Team Meadowlark, I will always be thankful to them for the forum and the support to challenge uh, ideas and create. And it's with much gratitude that I accept this prestigious award and the opportunity to join a family of science, technology, and innovation. Thank you. Thank you, Christian and Sel Seldu, for, um, for that award. Um, uh, so I just want to say that this is just a, a wonderful uh, group of rising stars and um, it's such beautiful technology, science, medicine and engineering. We learn such beautiful mysteries every year. Um, I'd like to give special thanks to the nominators for recognizing with uh, these exceptional researchers and congratulations to all of the awardees. I now turn the show over to Terrence for closing announcements. Thank you, Dr. Orth, and thanks again to all of you for joining us tonight. We're really glad that you could be here tonight. Uh, <clears throat> just want to let you know that we're going to be, um, sorry, I'm going to just adjust something here so that hopefully everyone can see me okay. We're going to be uh, presenting individual research sessions for all of these award recipients. Uh, this is a great opportunity to learn more about their work in detail. Uh, basically, each of them is going to get a webinar session in the coming months. We have the first one in two weeks, uh, starting with medicine, and then every two weeks after that, uh, we'll have another recipient presentation. These will take place on Wednesdays at 11 a.m., and they'll wrap up before noon. Uh, and so we're really looking forward to learning in more detail about their work 
We've got more information about this series on our website. And all of you will also receive an invitation uh, and a follow-up email tomorrow to attend these sessions. Also in that email will be a link to a recording of tonight's ceremony, as well as the individual videos that we shared with you tonight, uh, which you can go watch on YouTube. Again, would invite you to, to go uh, take a minute and watch them there. Uh, they're turned out really well and we're really uh, proud of them. We're also excited to announce that as of today, nominations are now open for the 2022 Edith and Peter O'Donnell Awards. And you can go to our web website, tamis.org slash O'Donnell Awards. We've got information there about the nomination process and encourage you to review that and nominate the next class of rising stars uh, of research in Texas. Nominations will close at the end of April. In closing, we'd like to once again recognize the generosity and vision of the uh, O'Donnells and their foundation and all that they do to make this award, uh, this award program possible. And thanks to all of you again for attending this celebration tonight of these rising stars of research in Texas and making Texas a destination for world-class research. Uh, if you'd like to help us continue this tradition of recognizing these talented researchers, you can go to our website, tamis.org support and see how you can also contribute to this program. That concludes our ceremony for this evening. We'd like to thank uh, once again, the nominators, the recipients, and our host, Dr. Kim Orth of UT Southwestern. Thanks to all of you. Please be well and be safe and have a great evening and we'll see you next time. Thank you.